Welcome and 07 to section 2 of the API C++ tutorial on how to connect an API with an HTTP request in Unreal Engine. If you haven't seen the first part of the series yet, we will put the UMG widget together. You can find the link on the screen right now or you can find it in the description. Also in the description, you can find the link to the API. Before we move on, please take a second to like and subscribe. It helps the channel to beat the algorithm. Thank you for your support. Now let's get into the video. Okay, it's time to get the code down to send the request and to retrieve the answer. But first of all, let's take a little look at the API we're going to be using. So this is the timeapi.io. It's a free time API and doesn't need any API keys and therefore it's very easy to use. So if we go into the API docs here, we can see the option we have to choose from. And I want to get the current time of a specific time zone, so let's click on that. Um, this gives us the option to test it out. Let's just push execute here for Amsterdam and see what we get. So what is it we actually have here? Well, in the curl you can see the request. It's a GET request. And GET is used for unsecured retrieval of data. Um, so if you want to send information or you, with a package or you want to update a database, you will use the POST option. However, you just want to retrieve it and, and read what it gives us. So. Next we have the request URL and let's copy this and store it somewhere like a notepad because we're going to use it later and copy it into our code. Um, in the request URL you see the ending after the equal sign. That is the request parameters. So in order to get a different city you need to change the parameters of the request. Okay. And we see there is a JSON type and we're going to get into JSONs in just a second. Next we have the actual response, and this is a JSON format. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very lightweight way of sending data, and this is the response we get. And this is what we need to parse out and dig into to, to see what we actually need. So let's go back. We're going to find the different time zones that we have that we can populate in our query. Under the time zones, we have get all the available time zones. And let's test that out. So. This is also an API request, just like before, but it's with a different request URL. So technically you could just do a request to populate the list for with all the options, and then the user could pick whichever time zone they wanted to get. However, this is uh, a lot more work to, to get into, so it's a little bit too much for a single tutorial like this. So uh, let's pick out and copy these three cities we want. And the list is pretty long, so we're going to use the control F function to find our cities. So here we got Tokyo. And here we got London. And New York. All right. Please observe that New York has a underscore for its space there. Okay. That's all we need from this web page. So let's close it down. All right, here we are back in the Unreal Engine. Let's go to the content browser. We'll twirl down the C++ classes and go to into the API tutorial folder. Let's double click on our game mode base file and load up our C++ editor. I'm using Visual Studios. The first thing we want to do is to include the dependencies that we need. And to do that, we're going to open up the build file. So let's twirl down the API tutorial source and API tutorial and open up the API tutorial dot build.cs. So CS stands for C sharp. In the public dependency model names, we can add the model we need. So let's put in HTTP. JSON. JSON utilities. And let's add the UMG as well. So what are these modules really? Well, they are libraries that give us a larger code base to work with, basically. So now we can save it and we can close it. Okay, let's return into the game mode.h file. I want to organize it a little bit. So let's add a public section here. Then I want a protected section for functions. And I want a private section for variables. And then I need another public section for all kind of functions that we need to read from other places. Um, in this case, we're going to use it for functions that we call from the blueprints. Right, let's add the constructor. In this protected field, we can add the begin play and it's going to be a virtual void begin play override. 
right? Let's put in a comment. Let's call it uh, call when the game starts and or when spawned. Okay, now we can create the body on these two. Next, we want to include the HTTP file on the top here. And remember to make sure that in the H file, the generated file has to come last, okay? Now, in the protected section here, we will continue to create a send function for the HTTP request. So we'll create a void function called send HTTP get. And this needs to be a view function. Let's put in a comment that's saying use to send the HTTP request. All right, let's create the body. The next thing we want to do is create a function to handle the response. We can start with a comment saying handle the HTTP request response. And this needs to be pretty specific in its parameters. So it's going to be a void and we're going to call it on get time response. And the first parameter is the request itself. And it's going to be an F HTTP request pointer. And we're going to call it request. Next, we need the response parameter. So we're going to have an F HTTP response pointer. And let's just call it response. And the third parameter is going to be a bool called be connected successfully. All right, let's create the body for this. And now in our private section, let's create a variable to store our HTTP module. So it's going to be an F HTTP module. It's going to be a pointer. Let's call it HTTP. All right, let's save this and go into the CPP file. In here, we can start at constructor. We want to store the HTTP module in the HTTP variable. So we can add the HTTP equal. So we're going to start with an ampersand and then F HTTP module colon colon get. I say it's going to be a get request. Um, let's go down to the begin play function, add the super begin play. So I have a tendency to forget that. So I usually try to put it in as soon as possible. And let's go into our send HTTP get function. We'll start out with creating the request. So this is going to be a T shared ref. And we're going to put in I HTTP request. And then we're going to put in an ESP mode. I'm going to be thread safe. And we can name it request. And this is going to be equal to the HTTP variable that we created. So we're going to use the arrow notation and create request. All right. So now we want to bind the response function to the request. Okay. So request, and then we're going to do the arrow notation on process request complete dot bind you object. And this will take two parameters. You're going to start out with this. Uh, and then we're going to use the address of the response function. So we can actually copy this and paste it in. All right, now we want to know where to send this request. So we will add a request set URL. And in this parenthesis, we're going to put in the address we're going to send it to. However, for right now, we're going to leave it empty because um, we got to work some on the URL before we can uh, put it in here. And we're going to do that in section three. Now we want to set what type of request this is. And we know that it will be a GET request. However, now is the time we let the request know what it is. So, all right. So we add the request and set verb. And within the parentheses, we're going to add the word get. The next thing we need to do is set the headers for the request. And the first header we want to set is the user agent. So we're going to put in request set header. Parentheses user agent. Then a comma. And then we're going to add X 
dash Unreal Engine dash Agent. Now we're going to add the content type we're expecting in return. So we are expecting a JSON file in return. So now we can let the request know that we're expecting a JSON file. So request set header content type and then we're going to put in application forward slash and JSON, right? Okay, now we successfully created a request. We just want to send that request, right? So we do that by adding request and process request. Okay, so let's just add a few comments to this, okay? First of all, we created a request. Then we bind the response function to the request. And then we are setting the URL where to send the request. Well, we're going to get to that a little bit later, but this is where we do that. Then we add what type of request. Then we add the user agent. What is a user agent really, you might ask? Well, the user agent's request header is a characteristic string that lets service and network peers identify the application, operation system, vendor, and or version of the requesting user agent. That is the official answer. Now, basically, we let the server know what application sent the request. Okay, that's basically what it is. Next, we let the request know what response we're expecting. And the reason we put this in is to make sure that if the response we're getting is not a JSON, it will throw an error. Now, this is a little level of security to ensure we're not start tanking down data that are not intended to be tanked down, okay? And lastly, uh, this is where we are actually are sending the request. Let's move on to the on get time response. Um, here we will start out by creating a JSON object. So here we will add the T shared pointer of type F JSON object. We're going to call it JSON object. Then we want to do a check if the response was successful. If the response get the response code, and this code is the normal HTTP code you might have seen elsewhere, uh, like 404 for page not found, etc. Well, there is a code called 200, means everything is all right. And you usually shouldn't see it, but that's what it's called, 200. So if the response code is equal to 200, we can continue. Now we want to store the response in a string. So we're going to do a const here as we don't want to change this. And it's going to be an F string. Let's call it response body. And let's store it with response, get content as string. Okay, so now we get response in a variable and now we just want to read the data. So we're going to create a JSON reader. So how do we do that? Well, we start right here with a T shared ref tjson reader and we're going to call it reader uh, in this reader we're going to store tjson reader factory colon colon create and the data we want to read is the response body that we just created all right so now we want to check if there was a successful reading of the data and everything is okay. So let's make an if statement. And in this if statement, we're gonna add fjson serializer, colon, colon, deserialize. And now we're gonna add the reader and the JSON object we created in the start. This is a lot of process, but if you go through it, it's actually understandable. So let's add some comments here. First, we created the JSON object that we will be working with. Then we check if we are successful in our request. Uh, we store a response in response body here. And then we create a read for a JSON. And here we do a check if we were successful in reading the JSON. And here we can just put in line. This is where we put the information on what to do with the data. That is how you create a request and how to build up a response function. So in the next section, 
that you can see on the screen right now, we're going to make sure that we retrieve the correct data by working a little bit with the URL and we're going to handle the data coming back through the response. So jump right over to that. And before you do that, please hit that like and the subscribe button and that would help me out a lot. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this, um, this, in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.